Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss the role of ARP in remote communication. Right, friends, before coming to this uh, topic, if you are watching our channel first time or if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get a notification message whenever we upload a new video. Okay, now coming back to our topic, the role of ARP in remote communication. Here we are going to design a topology. Uh, we will have a router 2911, two switches, 2960 series, also some edge devices, PC1, PC2, PC3 and PC4. We will delete this PC. We will rename these devices R1, here is S1 and this is S2. Also we have PC1, PC2, PC3 and PC4. Now we will connect these devices. We will select copper straight through from R1 G0 slash 1, S1 G0 slash 1. R1 G0 slash 2, S2 G0 slash 2. Also, we will connect these PCs, PC1, PC2 to this S1. Here, PC3 and PC4 to S2. Here, we can see two networks. Okay, we will arrange like this. Here we will highlight each networks. Here we can see our first network. And here is our second network. Now we will assign IP addresses for these devices. Here this is our network 1. We will use 192.168.1.0 24. And for this network, we will use this is network 2 192.168.2.0 network slash 24. Now we will assign IP addresses. So here for this PC1, we'll go to desktop IP configuration. Here we can see IP address. We will assign 192.168 dot 1 dot 10 here we can see the to mask we will use the default gateway as 192.168.1.1 now coming to pc2 desktop ip configuration here we will give the ip address 1.11 to mask and here is the default gateway. Now we will set this uh, default gateway of this network 1. Here we can see this network is connected to this interface uh, G0 slash 1 on this router R1. And we already planned our uh, default gateway 192.168.1.0. So we will set that IPv4 address for this interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 on this router R1 coming to R1 CLI press return to get started ok enable configure terminal we will go to the interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and here we will set the IP address 
192.168.1.1 then this submit to mask 255.255.255.0 then we will give no shutdown command now we can see the link between this r1 and s1 is up now we will assign ip address for this pc3 and pc4 so here we can see our network address 192.168.2.0 coming to pc3 desktop ip configuration here we will set the ip address it's a 2.10 And here we can see the submit to mask. We will give the default gateway as 192.168.2.1, the first usable IP address. Now we will go to PC4, desktop IP configuration. Here we will give the IP address 2.11. Here we can see the submit to mask. It's 11, okay. Default gateway, 2.1. Now we will set default gateway. I mean, uh, we will set the IPv4 address for this interface, gigabit third zero slash two on this router R1. We can do that coming to, we can do that coming to R1, CLI, we will exit and we will go to the interface gigabit a third zero slash two and we will set the IP address 192.168.2.1 and here is the submit to mask. Then we will give no shutdown command. Right. Now here we can see the link between this router R1 and S2 is up. Now we done all the uh, basic configurations uh, on all the devices. Now consider this PC1 wants to communicate to uh, the remote PC that is PC4 then how it's going to happen we will see that. Here PC1 wants to communicate to this device PC4 and here we can see this PC1 is in 192.168.1.0 network and here we can see this PC4 is in 192.168.2.0 networks. Both are in different networks. This is what PC1 does. So it will uh, check the destination IP address and this uh, source device IP address. If they are in the same network, then he forwards to uh, the switch. If they are in the different networks, then what it does? It will check for the default gateway. This PC, I mean this uh, source device, uh, will get its uh, default gateway from this PC itself because we already configured uh, in this device. Here, this device PC1 has to get the MAC address of this interface, a gigabit a third zero slash one on this router R1. I mean the MAC address uh, of the default gateway. For that, this PC1 will go to its ARP cache and he will uh, check for the MAC address. If this MAC address does not exist in his uh, uh, ARP table, then he will initialize he will give a uh, ARP request okay now we uh, we just uh, verify the ARP table of this uh, device PC1 we will go to PC1 desktop command prompt here we can give the command ARP hyphen A and here we can see no ARP entries found right so uh, this uh, PC1 has to get the MAC address of this interface uh, G0 slash 1. So he generate uh, an ARP request. Okay, we will uh, ping and we will verify that. Suppose we will ping from this PC2 uh, to this PC3. First of all, we will go to simulation mode. Okay, then we will close this simulation panel. Now we will come to this PC2 desktop command prompt 
and here we are going to ping to 192.168.2.10 this is the IP address of our uh, PC3 okay so now we will uh, minimize this uh, PC2 command prompt now here we can see two PDUs are generated one is ICMP and the other one is ARP it's an ARP request so we can see the content of this uh, PDU here we can see the details source IP address it's a 1.11 and here we can see the destination IP address it's 192.168.1.1 and here we can see the destination IP address uh, shown uh, here is the default gateway of this PC2. We can see this PC2 is uh, sending uh, an ARP request. Here we can see that the ARP process constructs a request for the target IP address. And here we can see the target IP address is the default gateway 192.168.1.1. Now we will close this PDU information and we will click on capture or forward and here we can see this uh, uh, ARP request goes to S1. Again we will open this uh, PDU information on the switch S1 and here we can see the information. Here we can see the destination MAC address, uh, it's a broadcast address because we have to get the MAC address of this uh, target IP address 192.168.1.1 here we can see this is a broadcast frame the switch sends out the frame to all ports in the same VLAN except the receiving port now this uh, switch will uh, forward uh, this uh, ARP request to all its uh, ports except uh, where this PC2 is connected we will see that we will click on this capture or forward and here we can see it goes to PC1 and to this router R1. Here we can see this PC1 is dropped this ARP request. Because here the target IP address uh, and this uh, PC1 IP address is not matching. So he dropped it. But here we can see this ARP request is accepted by this router R1. Because here the target IP address is matching with the IP address of this interface uh, gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 on this router R1. Now this uh, R1 will send ARP reply uh, to this PC2. Okay, so here we will open this uh, PDU information. And we will go to this layer 2 in out layers. And here we can see in this uh, layer 2, here we can see the source MAC address and uh, here we can see the destination MAC address. Uh, here the source MAC address is the MAC address of this interface G0 slash 1. And here we can see the destination MAC address, the MAC address of this PC2. And here we can see uh, it says the ARP process replies to the request with the receiving ports MAC address okay right we will uh, see that we will click again on this capture or forward and here we can see ARP replies goes to S1 again we will uh, click on this uh, capture or forward before that we will uh, open our ARP table and here we can see this ARP table is empty Here, once this PDU uh, reaches to this PC2, uh, we can see this uh, ARP table will be updated. So, we will click on this uh, capture or forward again. We can see it goes to PC2. And here we can see in ARP table, uh, it's updated. Here we can see the IP address 192.168.1.1, the default gateway. And here we can see its MAC address. And here we can see the interface. Yes, now PC2 received uh, the MAC address of uh, its uh, default gateway. Now he is going to send this ICMB packet uh, to uh, his uh, default gateway. We can see that. 
here is icmp it, it goes to switch s1 and here we can see it goes to r1 now here we can see this router r1 dropped this icmp packet and here we can see it generated uh, an arp request because now this router r1 is unaware of the mac address uh, of the destination i mean the mac address of our uh, pc3 so here also it will do the same previous process we can see that we'll click capture or forward and here we can see that arp goes to s2 so it's a broadcast it goes to pc4 and pc3 and here we can see a pc4 dropped uh, this uh, arp request and pc3 is accepted now pc3 will reply back to this router r1 okay it's there so once they get the mac address details uh, the actual packet the icmb packet uh, will send from the source to the destination we will verify that again we will uh, ping from pc2 to our pc3 and here we can see our icmb not required any arp because uh, it's already updated our arp table you'll click capture or forward here we can see it goes to s1 r1 s2 and to the destination then pc3 will give an acknowledgement back to this pc2 so here we can see it goes back to pc2 so here we got the first reply here we can see that okay right so friends in this video we have seen the role of arp in remote communication so dear friends if you have any doubt any suggestions please comment below and if you like our video give a thumb and share with all your friends stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.